So we're going to do a fuel pressure test. They have a crank that won't start. And so with a lot of the GM vehicles, including a Corvette, the test port will have a little black cap like this on it. You just pull it off. It's like a Schrader valve like you have on a bicycle tire. So what you want to do is, ooh, we got a lot of pressure. You want to screw this on there and then look up what your specs are supposed to be. In this case, it, when you turn the key on and crank the engine over, you're supposed to have between uh, 45 and 47 PSI. 40 is good in reality, but that's what the book says. So go ahead and just tick the starter, just make it crank a little bit, and we'll watch what it does. See, we had a lot of fuel coming out initially, and then we had a lot of air, and now we have very low pressure. Go ahead and crank it over a little more. And crank it for about two seconds. So we're not getting any fuel pressure. We had a whole bunch of hot air or something that got in. So what we have is probably a separation of the fuel line inside the fuel tank. So the next thing we'll do is we'll take off the gas cap and then listen to see if we can hear the fuel pump coming on. So if you want to crank it over, we'll go ahead. So the fuel pump is coming on. You can hear it run. You can feel the vibration of it even. So if the fuel pump's coming on but then there's no pressure and you have a bunch of hot air, usually that's a line between the pump itself and uh, where it's supposed to go into the line there's a short rubber hose. Typically what will happen is it'll blow a clamp or something and it'll pop that off so that it'll just be spouting fuel you know, into the system instead of up through the fuel line. So the Corvette that we're working on today, it doesn't start on account of it doesn't have fuel pressure. Um, if you spray starting fluid, it starts up and runs great. Uh, if you do a fuel pressure test, it has really high pressure and it just drops off and then there's a bunch of air behind it. So normally what that is, is you'll have your fuel sending unit. This will be the top of your gas tank. And then this is where the fuel pump is and there's a sock strainer. Uh, that goes down into the tank and then this would be your fuel level. So what happens is there's a hose between the fuel pump and then the outlet pipe for you know that goes up to the fuel pressure uh, regulator. So anyways sometimes there'll be a hose that comes undone there or a clamp will come undone or it'll crack or split so it just dumps the gas right back into the tank. So that's a possibility. The other one is the fuel filter. Uh, you've looked at the fuel filter, it just looks like a can, and then it's got a couple of threaded ends to it. Uh, so inside it's got a bunch of paper folds and a little uh, filter element. The fuel goes this direction. So the fuel goes in here, and if it gets all plugged up, and then this comes undone, because this is only attached on one side, but if that happens, and, this gets, and there's usually a little steel plate on this end, so it'll hit that and then go around and then penetrate through and go out this way. But if this gets worn out, old, tired, if it goes bad, then this whole filter element and all of the crud and stuff will block that off. And typically this won't happen, but it does happen occasionally. So as you look at the engine compartment, you can see these two uh, braided lines that come off from the fuel rail where we did the pressure test. That's the pressure test cap. You can see it when I put my hand behind it. Uh, but anyway, you got a pressure line and a return line, so you follow these back to the tank and somewhere in there you'll find a fuel filter. So Spanky here is going to give you the little undercar tour and show you where that is. Okay. And there it is. And this is just above part of the frame. Um, here, here's the right, right front passenger tire. And you can kind of follow the shock up. So the size for that is a 5 8 on the nut, and it should be an 11 16 on the filter part. What we're going to be using is we're going to use uh, the crow's foot line wrenches on an extension like this. And that way you can reach up in there and get it to crack free, and then reach your hand in and get it the rest of the way. This saves you a lot of time. It saves about an hour if you use this tool. So coming from the passenger side front tire going underneath the vehicle, you can see the little crow's foot wrench and how that lines up. And what I've done is I've reached through behind the little X strap 
and put a uh, wrench to hold the filter because otherwise it'll just spin. You can see that it is in a bracket if you look over this line, but the bracket doesn't hold it all that tight. So you'll want to reach through with the wrench. How's it going? Good, good. Good, good. How's it down there? Uh, it's a little smelly. Smells like gas. I like it. <laughs> so going underneath the fender here, you can see that there's a 3 8 drive configuration of extensions. Um, going from that crow's foot all the way up to where Spanky's holding a ratchet. So then what I do is with an 11 16 wrench, I take the bottom of the filter and tighten it clockwise like that. And then I turn it over, I do it again, and I'm basically tightening the filter onto the nut that she's holding. And I'm debating whether or not to say, hold that nut, Spanky. <laughs> hold that nut. Oh, oh, oh. Hold on. You okay? Did yeah. I smash your hand? Yeah. Uh-oh. So I got y'all distracted. Go All right. Way to speak up. So anyway, I tighten it onto that on the upper one. And then she'll show you here in a second. As I drop my flashlight into the drain pan, I have the other one started about two or three threads. But then that's it. And then that one's easy to get from down here. Um, you'll notice that on the X strap on the bottom, there's four bolts that hold it into the frame. You don't want to support the vehicle from one side or the other and then pull this off. It'll cause the frame to twist because it's unibody. Um, so you'll want to make sure. I'm just holding it up in the center there with the jack and then with the jack stand as a backup. Uh, so anyway, you undo those four bolts and then there's four nuts that tie in the middle where it makes an X with the other cross strap. So with this pulled down, I'm able to get my arm in here. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't be able to for that upper one. So once we have the fuel filter in place, we want to put the strap in. You can see how the strap goes under the return line. So you'll want to have that in. Um, I like to have that good and tightened down before I do the nut on the bottom. You don't have to. It's just a nice order of operations to work with, for, in my opinion. So now that I've got the little bolt in the strap here, a little 10 millimeter, I can reach in there with my hand and uh, screw this down. The only reason I can reach in there with my hand now is just because I have that uh, cross strap undone. I'd recommend just doing that to begin with. I've done it without doing it because I was too intimidated on the last two or three I did, but this one is doing fine, so much better. Recommend it. Let's see where my arm is back around there. Or you can go through the front, either way. There's lots of room now. Okay, so we cycled the key. We ticked the starter so the fuel pump had come on. And it actually started. We weren't meaning to. Um, but the whole system was devoid of gas, so we drained it out. But let's go ahead and uh, have you start it up. And we do have the door open for ventilation. We'll open the other one. Doesn't that sound good? <laughs> You're smiling. <laughs> That's a beautiful noise. Other fun thing about the Corvette. See, I gotta use my foot. If you put the hood down on these older ones, you got those uh, the tip stall lights that go out based on the angle. So if you wiggle the hood, it looks like strobes. You know I love flashing lights and strobes and stuff. <laughs> Uh, that's a win. So you remember that little thing that I was talking about that goes between the fuel pump and the strainer? I said it was a little hose. In this case, it's a pulsator. And so we're going to look into the pulsator and see if it's okay. But this is the fuel pump here, and then this is the strainer sock that I was telling you about. And to get these out of this car, you just pull them out through the fuel door. Uh, you take off the fuel door assembly, and then underneath there's a boot. You push the boot in from the side here and then work it around the rest of the way, pull it up, and then you've got a bunch of bolts in here, and then you've got three hoses. You've got your EVAP hose, uh, your pressure hose, and uh, your return line. This is the, the line that goes for the uh, fuel level gauge, and then also it goes for the power for the pump. What it should do is just run power right to the pump. This one's ground. That one's power. Power's a gray wire. Gray wire goes all the way up here. 
Isn't that the one that I did the first time and nothing happened? I didn't ruin his fuel level setting, did it? It's not hard to get to if I did it. So that's sending power to the pump and the pump is not working. Problems found. Fuel tank uh, sending unit works when you go to put a new pump in. All you gotta do is unbuckle and clip the old one out. Get rid of the old rubber, um, I don't know what you call it, insulator. It insulates it, you know, from vibration and conducting and stuff. And then you just put the sleeve on the new one, uncork the cap off of it. I saved these. These are so handy for plugging hoses and stuff. So I'll take this, slide it on. If it doesn't want to go good, you can spray silicone or put a little gasoline on it. This one's pretty well oiled up and ready to rock. I'm going to transfer this over since I didn't get one with the new one. This is the pulsator. Make sure that it's all happy. Test fit your plug. You just slip this up into there. And then also slip it into your little insulator that you have here. And then push it back down. But make sure that you're on snug enough and it's installed. There's one more thing that we got to do. Make sure that this is nice and perpendicular, orthogonal to the shaft. Get that to be happy. And then you got to get a strainer. Don't reuse the old one. And then try to remember how the strainer went or look at it before you took it off. That's probably the best thing to do. And uh, you stick it on. When you go to put this back into the tank, it goes in this way with the line and everything like that. So what you want to do is you want to fish in this side first and then uh, feed the strainer in like that. And make sure this stays on good because <laughs> if not, you're hosed. So I think this is all the video we're going to do. If you like the video, be sure to subscribe, click like, and if you have any questions, uh, put them in the comments below. Cheers. P.S. Uh, so we couldn't remember which way this went on. So put it lengthwise because if you look down, down, down into the gas tank, you can see that the yellow tray is lengthwise to how the pump will go in like that. Gotcha. Or that's upside down. Turn it over like that. Bada bang. You see it's over to the left hand side, just like that little tray is also over to the left hand side. To the left, to the left. Well, now I'm confused. I thought it went like that. That's okay. I'll show you why. The reason why I know is that this is the pressure one. It's at an angle. Mm -hmm. And then this one here is the smallest of all of the hoses. And that's the EVAP hose. And I remember wrestling that off oh, with yeah. the pliers. That's this little hose that's sticking up there. So you have two hoses on the bottom, and then you have this one. See how it's got an angle to it? And that's the pressure hose. Somebody painted a little orange mark on it. And then you see this is at an angle. So that's how oh, you know. Oh, so that yellow tray is going to sit along here. Exactly. Okay, I was thinking, you know, like that. So that's yep. why it's going to be. Well, now you got it. And you probably just know. saved somebody a whole lot of time by asking that question. <laughs> I so hope you, so. <laughs> you can tell them you're welcome. You're welcome. Awesome. So if you look on the fuel sending unit, the purple wire is the one for the sending unit. The gray wire is a power wire, black wire is ground. So when you go to do it, uh, Spanky's got the black wire, I've got the gray one. I run power to it and it's happy. We tested the old one this way and it would not turn. So that was reassuring because we had a little bit of doubt as to what the problem was is the fuel filter solved part of it the fuel filter what happened it, it was broken loose on the inside and so it would kind of cork up right it up. but it wouldn't even start yesterday and now it would start and then it would die yeah, we that was the out, symptoms and then it died we were going to go to lunch yeah. <laughs> Looking well, sporty little disappointing so anyway we'll get this done it doesn't take a real long time to do and then we'll still go to lunch so for all of you that think that women don't belong in the shop few though there may be my hands don't fit in there spanky's hands fit in there all day long <laughs> <laughs>
And their women, what's the other thing that women do that I've noticed about you? Safety yeah. glasses on your head. <laughs> they tend to adhere yeah. to the safety rules a lot better I than men do. Them, so yeah. But yeah, and then we don't, we're less likely to break things. Or light things on fire or crash things. I mean, it may be a little less exciting, but when it comes to You're customer, a lot more cautious than I am, I think. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Way to go. All right, let's hear it. It's gotta make you smile. That does. It's got a towing package on it. That's kind of a fun thing. It sounds great. Give it a little gas. Let's hear this. Ready?